Hey everyone, happy Sunday. Welcome to a Sunday edition of Virtual Veg Fest Live. Pretty excited about our talk today with Marissa Miller Wolfson, the director of Educated and the author of a new cookbook that is incredibly important for people who are raising families that are vegan, or want to raise vegan children. So first let's talk about some business. Our our pass the buck for October is Cows Come Home. For every dollar that you donate, you'll get entered to win a prize pack to, from Hodo Foods. Cows Come Home is in Eastern Tennessee. I have a nice purple bruise on my leg from a love tap from a cow <laughs> last week, which is pretty incredible. But I, one of the best experiences ever was to go hang out with cows and, and give them hugs and have them love on me, you know, to the point where I have a bruise. But it was really incredible so we totally support cows come home and everything that randy is doing over there so if you can donate that would be great you can find the information on our social media plant-based network thanks to them for being our partner in virtual veg fest and if you go like the virtual veg fest pages facebook instagram youtube you'll be entered to win a prize from sun warrior or gain follow your heart crofters organics and thanks to them for supporting us and donating these prizes on a monthly basis and you can also get a 25% discount if you buy from Sun Warrior through a code that we also have on our social media. And the code is Virtual Veg Fest in all caps. Let's see. What else are we going to talk about today? <laughs> so Marissa and I were just chatting up for the last like 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so. And this is going to be pretty cool because we're going to touch on not just Vegucated, you know, the movie, if you haven't seen it, I don't know where have you been. We totally have to go see that movie. I'm from New York. It's based in upstate New York where they went up to see the farms. Absolutely incredible. But she also has a new cookbook out that is a vegetated family, right? So we'll have her explain more about that. But that's important. You know, if you're really trying to raise a vegan family and trying to get kids to eat food, which isn't always easy, we're going to probably talk, we're going to talk about that as well. But also, we're going to also stem out to bullying and body shaming because that's really important to touch on because it, it's kind of all together. I mean, especially if you're trying to raise vegan children and they go to a, a, a public school where there aren't as many vegan options. But I know her kids are going to a more private school that's vegan friendly. So let's bring Marissa on. Here we go. Hi. Hello. Welcome so much. I'm so glad you're here, especially on a Sunday. It's always good. And a reminder to everyone, if you have any questions or you have any comments, feel free to write them in the little box and we'll definitely get to them. And Marissa, tell us more about you and your background and what brings you to writing this book and Vegucated. Just go for it. All know. right. So um, I was just, I was actually just telling Helene that I've been vegan for 18 years now. And it was a pretty fast ramp on, like on ramp. Like I went um, vegetarian and three months later I went vegan. And um, it was through, a, an, initially through a Tom Reagan documentary that I saw in my Unitarian Universalist church. And then I, uh, and then I got more in, in tune with like what, like the health reasons and the environmental reasons, not just the animal reasons, which Tom was an animal film. And that really sealed the deal. So um, I used to host screenings of other people's documentaries around the country and in Canada, just grassroots screenings. And then I was like, you know, maybe I'll make my own film. I had no film experience. I had no budget, none of it. Um, and so I made every mistake in the book that you can make. Um, but I had a blast. It took a while because I didn't have the budget and the experience and all that. Um, and, but yeah, but Vegucated came out in 2011. And then I, uh, right in January 2012, I learned I was pregnant with my son, Gabriel, who's now just turned eight. And when he, when it was time for him to start eating, there, there wasn't any. I mean, there were no books, you know, there was like in the baby food books that are out there, you know, there'd be like one page of, you know, discussing vegetarian for babies. And it was like, oh, vegetarian is tricky. Vegan, forget about it. You know, it was like talk to your talk to your doctor, talk to your healthcare provider. And I was like, the doctors don't even go to like, we have like an afternoon of nutrition, you know, in medical school. I mean, obviously there are many, many, many wonderful doctors who, who do know about this, but you know, your average pediatrician, you know, they're not necessarily going to be that informed, at least especially not in 2012. So, um, or 2013. So, 
Um, so there really wasn't much out there. And so I, I would just like, you know, check on blogs and confer with my other vegan parent friends. Like, what are you doing? What are you just feeding them? Blah, blah, blah. Or I'd like try to veganize the baby books that were there. And, and, and then I just had that feeling like, well, somebody should really do this book, you know, do something for babies and toddlers. And there, there are tons of like vegan family cookbooks, but nothing for like brand new eaters. So I was like, well, maybe I'll do that. So, um, so I, uh, so I did. And I hired this gal, Laura Delhauer, um, when I was pregnant with my daughter to um, just sort of help around the house, be a mother's helper. And, but as I was interviewing her, she was like, I was learning that she was a really good chef and she was like even teaching vegan cooking. And after working with her a little while, I was like, ah, yes. So we turned our, uh, my, my own little kitchen into a test kitchen and we tried out all these recipes which, you know, we tried, we had tried them out. I had already tried a bunch out on my son. We tried out more on my daughter and then, um, we, you know, got a book deal and, and we had to, you know, suddenly write the thing in like nine months and we did. So it just came out in August, end of August. And now it's available wherever books are sold. That's awesome. And the name of the book? It's called The Vegucated Family Table. Right. And Tom Reagan was a member of the community down here in North Carolina. Yes. Right. So he's somebody who is pretty well known. That's and right. In the neck of the woods, of course. Because when, when I talk to him, like to newish vegans up here, they don't even know. They don't know what a rock star he was. Right. And you sadly, know? he passed away because he, he yeah. got ill and he passed away not that long ago. Right. And part of our, we have a, a large vegan Thanksgiving with the largest vegan Thanksgiving in the country that Dillip actually hosts and produces, but he organizes. And he does like, I think he started a Tom Reagan scholarship type, like donation thing at the event. It's one of the new things I think he did last year. Sadly, this year it's all takeout because, yeah. you know, but yeah, it's just really cool. So he's a, he's a, an important part of this community and went locally to college, lived in Chapel Hill. And yes, I lived in Chapel Hill, Durham, one of the two. So yeah, so when you mentioned that, I was like, okay, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> and he also, yeah, the, so the film is called We Are All Noah. Um, and I saw, you know, I saw that in 2001. That was January 5th, 2001. And, um, and that really opened my eyes. And I, you know, just saw what was going on in factory farms. And I said, well, that can happen, but not because of me. And I went vegetarian and then Mary Max, who passed away, but she was my vegan mentor. Um, she took me kind of under her wing and we started a nonprofit. We made the documentary together. But um, Tom Reagan's Culture and Animals uh, Foundation gave us a grant, a couple of grants for the film. So um, I will be forever, you know, in his debt and Nancy's debt, too. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So starting that film... I mean, it's it's a pretty cool concept. You take people, you, you kind of like, well, we, we can make you healthier. But you went further because you didn't just say, oh, hey, we can make you healthier. There's a lot of that now. But you yeah. went further to show them where their food was coming from. And that to me was like the hardest part of the film because you showed, you, you showed the horrors that animals go through. Yeah. And that, that makes it, that for people who know and understand, even if people don't, it's hard to watch. But it's really hard to watch when you already get it. Yeah. So, but what had you mirror, like mirror, marriage the two? I mean, I get why, but yeah. you, you didn't have to. But you No, did. no. The reason is because I'm an ethical vegan. You know, I mean, that is my bottom line. I mean, you know, I eat a whole foods, primarily a whole foods diet. And that's what the Vegucated Family Table is about. I mean, we have a, we have a couple silly, you know, holiday recipes that are not healthy, um, like the birthday cake. Nothing healthy about it, you know. Uh, but primarily, it's a whole foods. You know, I mean, we use oil, but we use like whole grains, and you know, it's very veggie. You know, loaded with veggies and fruits and whole foods. Um, so yes, that's very important to me, uh, and it's super important to Laura, my co-author. But at in my heart, I'm an I'm vegan for animals and, and for the environment. So, um, so I, that was that I made that film kind of in response to super size me. And what frustrated me about a lot of those documentaries at the time is that they were primarily health focused, um, or human focused. 
And I really wanted to bring the animal piece in there. So, and, and, and I thought it's actually in many ways the most powerful piece. I mean, yes, it doesn't appeal to uh, the person's self-interest, obviously, but if someone uh, is trying veganism or vegetarianism for health reasons, the ethical piece is often what makes them stick with it, right? Because if there's if it's not rooted or grounded in ethics, often you know they will blow wherever the wind blows in terms of their you know fad diet, you know whatever at the time. But if once you've grounded it in ethics, and they say, oh, there's this whole other reason why I should be doing that, and then right. it, yeah, I've heard, I've heard that often from a lot of people, long-term vegans, is that they feel that a lot of people come on for health for yeah the fad reasons that they don't stick around because the next new thing comes around i didn't lose the weight or i did lose the weight now i need to like move over to keto or move over to whatever right. it is and it, it's weird because i i obviously came aboard to veganism as health vegan okay. and but i i we already discussed i at 19 already understood animal rights and cruelty free and right. was debating in college at Suffolk County Community College, actually, because we're both New Yorkers. I was debating yeah. about, you know, animal cruelty and cruelty for products and why <laughs> and why mm -hmm. it's cool to like eat animals like back then. And so I already had that foundation. You just kind of like over 30 years, you kind of just kind of ebb and flow into wherever you feel your place is. And moving to North Carolina, of all places, I've lived in New York and California, North Carolina is the state and here in raleigh durham the city that had me become vegan wow which i, which I said i would never in new york on long yeah, island with yeah. vegan friends i was like i'm never going to become vegan i don't like soy milk i'm not gonna do this i'm not gonna do that and then moving here within i moved here in june by october i made the decision to be vegan. but it was because of a relationship right it was, took that one person to well, sort of or was it some information that that person exposed you to when i was 19 i went vegetarian because i met a guy that was an animal oh, rights okay. activist who was vegan okay. and being vegan back then as you like yeah <laughs> oh my there was like nothing and totally he, story, he had a yeah. mohawk and he was like in the city with signs like protesting and going to the animal rights parades like back then and we were talking 30 years ago but you know here it was a group of friends it was i met a group of people here all vegan oh. and i basically said some things i said which a lot of us have is i didn't want to give up whipped cream or parmesan cheese weird weird i, I know i i hear and I hear, I do hear cheese, but not specifically Parmesan. <laughs> right. It's like, I was like, but now we have both. I can make my own yeah. of both if I want yeah. to, but BioLife and Follow Your Heart have yeah. incredible plant-based Parmesan cheeses. Yeah. So you're like that, I mean, obviously that came after, but it wasn't yeah. important enough for me to hold on to that, to not just convert over to veganism nine years ago this fall, right? I it had already passed. It's like state fair time here is when I made the decision. And oh. state fair is not happening this year, but it always happens like the first two weeks in October. So that marks the anniversary that, that marks it, right? Because I made the decision to go vegan and then went to the state fair mm -hmm. <laughs> hungry and took two hours <laughs> to find food. <laughs> but now what's that state fair like for vegans? not too different oh, <laughs> i haven't gone back because it was just such no. a bad experience but no. i have friends who love it but there's there's a couple of restaurants now that go that have vegan options that make it much okay. easier so but you know <laughs> it's been it that uh, the people here i mean of all places i mean who would have thought that you know the south would be the right. inspiration for veganism for any of coming from New York. I mean, I came yeah. from Long Island and, and New York City. And here is where I, I made that transition. And it was one of the best things. Obviously, we all say it, right? One of the best things yeah. I could have done. I was, already, I was already drinking almond milk, dairy, that, that was gone. I was not eating eggs. That was already gone. It wasn't much for me to transition over to veganism. Yeah, I had something similar where I went to Smith College in Massachusetts and I lived with a vegetarian roommate. And I then I moved to New York afterwards and had a vegetarian roommate. So I actually had lived with vegetarians for seven years and didn't get it because I just thought, well, that's good for them. 
but I'm me, you know, and I'm German American. And if I, you know, turn my back on dairy and meat and everything, that's turning my back on my culture and my heritage and my family. Um, and I, that seemed more important to me than, you know, than anything else. But then once I real fully understood the ethical reasons and ethical arguments, then I weighed them and I was like, Oh, you know, I this I'm, you know, the living in, in alignment with my ethics is more important to me. Um, and since then, obviously I've been able to veganize, um, the crap out of some good German food, you know, um, and, or Midwestern food or whatever. So it's, it's a, not really an issue, um, which isn't to say that it wasn't a challenge at first, you know, it was a, it was a bit of a learning curve. The first, especially I'm going to say three months where I, I was like, what am I eating? That was also in 2001. Uh, now it's so much easier. But um, yeah, there was a learning curve, but now I, I, I just don't even think about it. It's just don't even think about it. <laughs> no, there's no reason to, especially yeah. when you go into like beyond sausage to make any type of German type food. Oh, sausage. I mean, you're set. <laughs> yeah, absolutely set, you know, and Tilferky has some good, you know, they have some good uh kielbasa you know put some kraut on there you know it's just it's not even an issue and even sweets you know the german sweets i have some german cookbooks um that i use and um or just even blogs they're like a bazillion quadrillion blogs so i just have fun that's awesome <laughs> yeah the only place where it's an issue i mean where i feel like i feel like i'm more aware of my veganism is my kids school obviously, because, you know, I have, I have, you know, actually a lot of really close friends who aren't vegan at all. Um, and I'm, and I will keep them forever. I love them. Um, but they, they so have accepted me and they just, they're like, of course we're going to a vegan restaurant or we're, of course we're going to a vegan friendly restaurant. It's just, it's just so not an issue. But now with my kids being in school, I'm like, oh, right. Oh, right. You know, okay. Yeah. We're, we're out of our bubble now. <laughs> and, he, and even that is a vegan friendly school. So I imagine that for um, parents who have kids, you know, in public school in Indiana, where I'm from, it's harder, you know, and I have so much respect for those parents who are doing it and they are doing it. It's, in, it's incredible. Uh, but New York City, I mean, they adopted Meatless Mondays in the public schools. So that's great. Um, and our school right now, the kids bring their lunch because there are like two campuses. There's the lower school, which is in one building and there's an upper school, which is in another building. And once they start third grade, they'll go into the other building and they have a vegan entree every day, oh, wow. which is, yeah, it's incredible. I mean, it's, my kids are like, I don't know if they'll eat that vegan entree because <laughs> they're, they're, oh, kids are so picky and they're both picky and like totally opposite ways. Like, are you serious? Um, so we'll see, but we'll, I'll definitely try to, um, you know, get them to, to eat, uh, the vegan food at school. Uh, but yeah, clearly labeled vegan sides. Um, we had, a um, my son had a vegan kindergarten teacher now this year for, uh, birthday parties, they always bake something in class so that it's not parents bringing in like whatever. And then I have to scramble to get whatever for my kid or the kids who have allergies. Um, now they're baking in class, also for COVID reasons, right? To kind of keep it safe. They're baking in the classroom and it's always one of those Cherry Brook kitchen, you know, uh, cake mixes. And it's like, I think it's like gluten-free or something too. So they just got the bases covered. Soy-free, nut-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, blah, 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 blah. So we're super lucky um, in that way. Yeah, that's really cool. And Elizabeth, so hi Elizabeth, she's, she's down here. She said that she went vegan for health reasons, but she stays vegan for the, all the other benefits. Now, Elizabeth, Elizabeth and her sister, Deanna, are vendors of ours doing doTERRA. Oh, my and they started as not vegan, and they just kept coming to the events and talking and eating. And then all of a sudden, they were like, oh, oh by the way, we're vegan. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So it's not like one of those stories, and correct me if I'm wrong, Elizabeth, where um, you kind of, you know, you're in it for health, but then you – at these veg fests, you see what the possibilities are, right? And then you realize like, oh, maybe I can do that. So that's where these veg fests are great because you've got the food and then you've got the speakers, you've got the reasons and you know, the why and the how, right? All exactly. Together. 
She also said that uh, my sister and I are Italian and thought similar, but have found we can enjoy a vegan version of everything we used to. But bonus is now it's cruelty free. Wonderful. Yes, so much great vegan Italian food. Oh, yeah. We were just saying that. Just seeing so yeah. you know, Elizabeth in Asheville, we went to Strada Italiano, I think it's called. And they had a vegan gluten free lasagna, vegan gluten free meatballs, and a vegan gluten free pizza, which, of course, you don't need the gluten free side. That's just my thing. But they had vegan lasagna. <laughs> so if you're in Asheville, it's another option because it's really hard to find, especially down here. We don't have a lot of vegan Italian. I know in New York City they do, but not here. <laughs> so Asheville has it. So Liz, when you get to Asheville, you have to definitely get that. But yeah, no, they're, they, they're now part of like plant pure nation and they run a pod i mean they like they didn't Whoa. just they didn't just make a decision to change their lifestyle and how they ate they just went full on and they That's support and, and coach other people as well oh, wonderful. yeah it's it's really incredible so when we go to like clearly you like to be in the kitchen <laughs> i've picked up on that and you've you've converted recipes from your heritage and, and mm -hmm. all of this and now you've got kids in the school thank goodness like the school that your kids are in or new yeah. york city is more friendly to right. like, having you know vegan options and then the the greener apple like what's it called the summit is going on yeah. right now with, yeah like like with amy like, you know amy healthy school lunches yeah right? yeah I used to work, actually used to work for amy for a spell oh there I you go yeah. And I always, um, and I'm in the e summit this weekend too. And she, I just love the work that they're doing. I mean, they have vegetarian cafeterias. It's that's like, like vegetarian schools. I love their work. Um, I'm so impressed by it. Right. And how do people access that summit? Um, they can just go to healthy, uh, healthy lunches.org, I believe, and just go, um, there'll be a link there on healthy lunches.org. Right. Let me do that. I can put that in the notes. Have a healthy lunches.org for the summit. Let me just make sure before I send people to the wrong place. Oh, my phone's not working, not cooperating. Let me see. If I <laughs> so, right. Yes. And of course, if you can go to the plant based network, <laughs> we have posted about the, the Green Apple Summit all over that because plant based network is a sponsor of it. So, you can definitely oh, wait. find it. Well, this healthy lunches, I think, is is an old link. So healthyschoolfood.org. Sorry. Oh, there we go. We'll update that. Healthyschoolfood.org. Cool. My son just came in, and I just literally, I just boofed him out. I just went, boof. <laughs> 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 it's, it's like, not now, unless you want to come on and talk about yeah, all yeah. the food that you like. like. You have a dad. <laughs> he is somewhere, you know, in this house, I think. <laughs> so... Some of the recipes that you have for, because this is different, like you said, it's for, the book goes five months old. Yeah. First, first food. First, first food. Really, yeah. Like, Some people you know. start, you know, between four and six months with the, with the solid food. Up so until toddler. Toddler. Yeah. Time. Well, so, past, well, even past, and we say toddler, but honestly, I mean, I make these, I make this stuff. There's some stuff that's like, just, you know, for anybody, you know, just really for anybody. Right, like mac and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but the reason why um, we sort of are tailoring it for toddlers and so forth is to just show, um, you know, what more toddler-friendly foods are. So kids, you know, we want to expand their palates. Obviously, that's a big goal. So that they can, um, you know, have a lifelong love of eating healthy foods. Um, but there is something that tends to happen in toddlerhood where, you know, there's this combination of asserting themselves and their power and their choices and sort of a more limited palate. <laughs> and it's infuriating. Um, so what we have done is um, we've, you know, included foods that are like generally kind of more accepted you know by little kids but then we also give tips um for getting not so generally accepted foods accepted by toddlers and then we also pay attention to extra nutritional needs so um actually you know people always talk about protein 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 but uh, and kids do have a higher protein need but i mean we know that you can so easily satisfy that right um even with toddlers babies and toddlers but an issue that can be tricky sometimes, especially if your kid is a touch choosy, is iron. 
So we um, have, we throw uh, actually baby cereal in some recipes, um, in a pancake recipe, for example. It's got um, spinach in there too. We have, um, I have an iron sink cookie, which has like all iron, iron strong ingredients in it. So um, like one cookie or two cookies or something is their 20% of their daily, you know, value of iron or something like that. So we just, we, we're having to be creative um, in finding ways for kids to eat iron rich foods that they also like. Okay. And what are some of the other foods that you hide in there or you have in there that you're trying to get the kids to incorporate into their diets? Yeah. So we've got, um, we were talking earlier about the mac lantern and cheese um, that ha- is a pumpkin base. Um, so we sneak pumpkin in there. Um, we do a lot of chia, you know, chia is great. It's full of omega threes. It's got some calcium in there, obviously the fiber and has a little bit of iron too. So, um, yeah, so we do chia, um, in some muffins. Um, we sneak, um, like, uh, lentils into a marinara. So, you know, a lot of kids love, I mean, just a classic kids dish item on any like restaurant menu is just pasta marinara. Like, yeah, kids like marinara, but we call, uh, it muscly marinara because we throw, you know, more veggies in there and we throw some lentils in there as well. And the kids actually have no idea. They have no idea that they're eating very, you know, very healthy food. Um, yeah. So those are just a few examples, but also, oh, also like, in there and there's a chocolatey fudge pop and we make that with um coconut milk which people don't know coconut milk is pretty iron rich um so you've got iron in there um yeah and then actually the neverland smoothie and the perfect green juice perfect first green juice they don't sound exciting We're like yeah we know green juice we know green smoothies no no the particular smoothies and green juice have been loved by all um, we had our film shoot in San Francisco. We had models who were not vegan. They just happened to be like through the publishing house. Cause that's where the shoot was. And so it's like our editor's kid and her friends and the art designers, you know, friends and stuff like that, their kids. Um, and they just gobbled up the food. It was crazy. I mean, they're not vegan and they just, blah, blah, blah. um, yeah. So in that smoothie, we've got, you know, mango, spinach, you know, in the green juice, we've got kale, but that's got a pineapple base, so that makes it super sweet. So we we really we actually had sixty seven families test out recipes. So this was super kid tested. Not one recipe got in there that that was not beloved by kids. Um, so these have been like like really thoroughly tested by families. Um, so you can. I mean, obviously not every kid's going to love every recipe, right? I mean, that's just not going to happen. But um, but we've made them with little kids in mind. That's awesome. And what's your, your kids' favorites? So Gabriel, my kids, you know, they love they love pasta. Um, they do like the mac and cheese. But my son and my daughter, they both really love Gabriel's green sauce. <laughs> Gabriel's green, green sauce. He couldn't go green for a while. Um, and that's just a pesto. It's just a, you know, it's just bas- it's a basil cilantro pesto with an almond base and tons of nooch, which is great for, you know, little brains, young growing brains. Um, they love that. Um, of course my daughter is a sweet tooth. She loves all the sweets. Um, and, uh, and we have, yeah, we, you know, we have good, you know, muffin stuff in there that's super, super kid friendly. I'm trying to think what else, what else do they really love? Oh, my son loves the pizza. Um, he loves this like green pizza sauce. And then we have a spelt crust, which uh, a spelt crust, which, you know, I always thought that pizza crust took forever to prove. And it was like this whole big thing. And I was super intimidated by it and I didn't want to do it. And then we came across this, um, this mom at, um, at Black Veg Fest in Brooklyn. And her name was Aqua Joy. And she was telling us about this pizza that she makes from scratch. And we said, oh, would you please submit it? Would you you please submit it? And she did. And we tried it and we loved it. And our tester said it was a revelation. So um, so that's in there. And my son loves that. Oh, that's awesome. I have a cat. 
So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. One cat, or do you have more than one cat? I have two cats and three dogs. Oh, I'm going to spring her across. Oh, who's oh, that? There she goes. Okay. Um, ow. <laughs> this is a much better thing to do with your cats when it's winter. Just, just a piece of advice. So, <laughs> she uh, almost looks like a kitty cat, a live stool. She sort of looks like a live stool. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta love her. That's Morgan, yeah. and she. The reason I adopted her was at and on Long Island at Little Shelter. Actually, is oh. I I'd already picked out another cat, and I went in to see the kittens. Ow! And she was six months old, and I lifted her up, and she crawled up on my shoulders and went to sleep. Oh. And then I said, I can't. I I no. had already, already picked out a cat. I was only there. I was there for a dog, and I came home with two cats. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, two cats is better than one cat. They'll be, keep each other company. <laughs> yeah. Do they get along? That's the thing. You never know, really, with cats who aren't, a, you know, a bonded pair. Well, they did. And then he, that, he was Stanley. He's passed away. But I have another cat named Rocky. And he and her, uh, <laughs> They, yeah i mean it's better than i thought it could be but the dogs and cats pretty much all get along so it's all good so i have a speaking of interruptions what do you need my love <laughs> I, mean, daddy, I think daddy texted me he took emmy out for a walk so what do you need my love so, I'm hungry. you're hungry okay there's a muffin in the kitchen okay <laughs> let me close the door again it's anyone who's a parent knows exactly what happened <laughs> oh, yeah. People say, you know, oh, you feed your kids, you know, vegan three times a day. You know, you're saving animals three times a day. I'm like, no, I feed my kid nine times, nine times a day. Like it's just snack after meal after snack, you know, but it's good because, you know, it's I think vegan food is, has a lot of fiber in it. So it, you know, it moves yeah. along. And so <laughs> that's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Food pushes along into your body. <laughs> Yes, yes. For anyone who's new to veganism, you know exactly what oh, we're talking yeah. about because suddenly you're in the bathroom a lot. Oh, <laughs> yes, I would say that it gets better, but probably not. You don't probably get not. Used to it. Oh, you get used to it, right? You just get used to it, right? And that's healthy. It's it's not a bad yeah. thing to get that much yeah. fiber and nutrition in, in flowing through your body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're eating more whole foods, plant-based, then you mm -hmm. definitely have more of that flow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the best way to put it. So have your kids experienced, or do you know families that have experienced so like either body shaming or bullying when it comes to you making the decision to be vegan, I mean, I know it happens for get, taking vegan out of it. I know it happens. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I mean, um, well, so I mean, for with my own experience, with, specifically with body shaming, um, I did a piece. There was a piece on Fox News about vegan parenting, and we were in that. And just some comments, you know, on the video on the Fox. Facebook page or whatever I was scrolling through, people were like, oh, you know, that, that tall, Gabriel was a toddler at the time, you know, he looks thin, da, 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 da. Meanwhile, my husband and I were very thin children too, you know, like we just were. Um, so you're going to get that, you know, you're going to get that, but he's not thinner than a lot of newer kids, you know? Um, so he's totally on his curve. His growth is fine. It's, there's nothing wrong with it, but people often, that's the first place they go, you know, or they're like, Oh, he's not very big. Okay. Well, it's his father, five, seven and a half. Okay. You know, like is his mother, like five, four. Okay. <laughs> right. um, you know, so people often will attribute things to veganism that maybe aren't related. There may be more genetic and they like to point it out, you know, and be critical of it. That was the only brush with that that we've had personally. Um, and he wasn't even aware of it and it wasn't public or anything. Um, but obviously I've heard of Danielle um, Dunn or Danielle Smith um, experience that. Uh, she's from UK Vegan Family, which is a wonderful YouTube channel. Um, and some people just took pictures of her family and ran with it. Um, and there was a there was an Instagram account that took uh, 
a picture that I had. They took from my educated Instagram a picture of Vivi the Super Vegan. We were reading that children's book to our kids, and I was just posting about it, saying that it's a wonderful book. And you know, they posted it, and they were like brainwashing. You know, meanwhile. How is that any more brainwashing than reading them old McDonald's farm, any kind of book like that, you know? So, um, so that's frustrating. Um, in terms of bullying, we haven't gotten there yet. I don't know how much of that is just a function of um, their age. You know, they're younger. There's not so much social stuff going on um, in terms of like, who's different and blah, blah, blah. But also the school where they are is very progressive and they really value diversity or, and preach it anyway. Um, so I think that helps. Um, he is the only, they are the only vegan kids in their grade, um, and in their little classes. So, um, but there are, there are kids, other kids with allergies. So they have to be mindful of different foods all around. Um, yeah, my kids haven't experienced like bullying or anything. I, you know, I'm used to it. If you put yourself out there as you do, Helene, and others, others who might be watching I've, in the adult spheres, especially online, people are going to be gross. They're going to be nasty. I say, I always say, oh, I see you're using your internet manners today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they just, they forget that, you know, it's not like a human on the other end. They just are gross. Um, and there was a guy on um, Twitter who was like, you know, on what planet are babies vegan or do babies eat vegan food? And then that rolled into this thing where I was like, I used to do sketch comedy and I started doing like silly like, characters and I started an Instagram for it um, called Character Kitchen. And and I so I just took that and I created a, I sort of did a Glaswegian rant on that. Um, but it was like, yeah, on what planet do babies not eat vegan food? Like you don't, you don't sit them down in a high chair and feed them steak. You know, they eat their little veggie purees. They eat their little, their little fruit and their little cereal. So anyway, um, so I, I tend to get fight back, um, creatively. I try not to get nasty. I try to be, you know, sincere and, um, um, but I will point it out. I will call it out. I will totally call it out. I won't run from a fight. I mean, I'm an Aries dragon, and so I will run into the fray. But I, but I try to be polite and civil, um, or if if that doesn't work, creative. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's important to you. Sometimes you ignore. Sometimes yeah. you speak up. Sometimes you get more offensive. Yeah. It depends on where, when, mood. Yeah. <laughs> mood has a lot to do with it. And you're right. If you put yourself out there, no matter who you are, what you do, any point in your life, the more you put yourself out there, the more you have success at something that you do. There are more people out there who want to knock you down. Absolutely. It's called you can, you know, is it you can measure your success by the ire of your enemies or something like that. There's a saying like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, you can read all the comments, but you got to take them with a grain of salt. You know, people have their own agenda. You know, one thing, you know, I thought I was being pretty tricky with Vegucated, sort of spinning it like, oh, these people are following a vegan diet. Let's watch their journey into a plant-based diet. Um, and then, by the way, bam, here's the animal stuff. <laughs> And, and people who uh, who weren't looking for that were felt a bit thrown by it. And then they got angry, you know, and they're like, they didn't want to be confronted with their own ethics. <laughs> um, so, you know, they, uh, they criticize that aspect of the film quite a bit. Well, like I said at the start, it was the more difficult part. The film was like, la di da, this is awesome. Oh, they're gonna lose. Oh, they're gonna lose weight. Oh, there's a oh, bam. Yeah. <laughs> here's here's what you're eating. <laughs> yeah. Here's what happens. Here's the dead animals in the in the dumpster that have been right. disposed of because they weren't good enough or they died through the process before they got turned into the meat that gets put on your plate. Exactly. You know? Yeah, it's reality. And it is reality. You should know how your food is processed. Yeah. And and with children too, you know, kids ask questions. Just this last week, I got a question on my local mom's group Facebook page. Like my, you know, my daughter just asked me um, what meat was, what should I say, or chicken or something, I don't remember. 
And all these people, um, you know, were responding, you know, and a couple of veg people jumped on. Uh, Terry Fox jumped on. She's a vegan local mom. Yep. Um, and she's a contributor to the book, too. So she jumped on and I jumped on. And, and you know, a lot of people were saying things like, oh, well, why don't you say a prayer, you know, thanking the animal for their life, you know, and that will, you know, make you maybe feel less bad about it or something. And so, you know, I pointed out, like, the animal is no less dead for your gratitude, you know. They were no less tortured for your thankfulness. You know, I mean, I try to say it more, more, you know, more nicely than that. But the, but the message was like, okay, look, if you kill my dog and eat my, eat my dog, um, and you pray over it, do you think I'm going to care whether you prayed over that dog? No, like this was a life, you know. So I said it much more diplomatically than that. But it just speaks to the fact that um, we. She, her question was basically like, how can I? She also couched like, we are not vegetarian. So she was like. Um, trying to protect her carnism, right? Which carnism is, you know, the idea, the ideology, the idea that, you know, animals are here for us to eat or use or whatever. And um, so she was, you know, trying to pose the question, like, how can I protect my carnism in my family and this culture um, while this child is confronting it? Like, how can I like squash it? How can I deal with it so that I can, you know, promulgate this carnist idea and that's just what it is at the bot you know and but i do believe that generations from now we're going to look back and we're going to be horrified by what we did to animals and uh you know and people are gonna and our children are gonna say you know where were you grandma or great grandma like what was your stance on on this um and it ties into climate and it ties into their very own future you know i mean the climate connections are could not be clearer so um so, you know, this is a great way. I mean, yes, they're pioneers, the children, and they, they have to be kind of, you know, outsiders right now and pioneers, but I, they won't be, uh, you know, it'll be mainstream. I'm going to say within a generation or two, it's going to be much, much, much more mainstream. And then three, four generations, if we're around, I hope we are, um, then they're going to look back and, you know, kind of judge us. Like we judge our elders on where they stood on race issues or gender issues and so forth, gay issues. Yeah, no, that's a really good point that I, I know I, I can say you probably feel this way, that there's no way <laughs> that we thought that there'd be so many vegan mainstream food options. Oh, yeah. Restaurants or like... Yeah. Or like Kentucky Fried Chicken and like like so what? Starbucks <laughs> breakfast sandwich, you know. This morning. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" You know, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, Baskin Robbins. Like, it's just crazy. I know. I mean, never ever. I there's no. just no way we went from you, you. You. I mean, we're not talking that long ago, right? No. Where there was there was no. there was there was, like Burger King came out with a, a veggie burger that was vegetarian. Right. Right, but it was gross. And, that's <laughs> and you know, and and now, I mean, it's it's everywhere. I mean, Smithfield, you know, it's here in North Carolina. Smithfield wow. has a whole vegan line of of meats. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in Sprouts, and you're yeah. like, what? <laughs> and Tyson is devoting all this energy and money to going plant word. I mean, I, I feel like, you know, our, my kids are going to hear from their grandparents and they're going to be like, what was it like? I mean, the grandkids, like, what was it like in the olden days when we couldn't eat it or whatever, you know? And they're like, whoa, when I was vegan, you know, whatever those old stories are, I feel like that's going to happen, you know, that's going to happen. And to go back to that woman who was trying to help their child understand what they were eating without causing the child to go, What? You're feeding me what? <laughs> I mean, because you have to use at some point. I mean, I didn't have that conversation growing up. I grew up in a very meat centric family, grew up in yeah. a catering hall that my dad worked as a caterer in Lawrence, Jewish, so Orthodox and oh, you know, wow. like full on like Chateaubriand, Capon, you know, prime rib every weekend and in the house as well. And at 15, I gave up all red meat. I just said, I'm done. 
And my family went like, there's no way this is going to last. And I was like, no, I knew something was wrong. I have ulcerative colitis. I was sick. No one could tell me what it was. So I knew intuitively to get rid of it. Yeah. So, and, and I did. And I eventually started, I took until my young twenties or my mid twenties actually to figure it all out yeah. and do feel better. But my ulcerative colitis, because I follow a vegan diet mm -hmm. is in remission. I don't, have, I don't have any symptoms and I I've had yeah. two colonoscopies in the recent the last 10, 20 years, whatever, 15 years, whatever. And both doctors have said, you don't have ulcerative colitis. And I've That's said, incredible. yes, I do. Mm -hmm. If I ate the way I used to, mm -hmm. because it's a food related, sure. food related illness. So it triggers it. Yeah. Right. Even though doctors will say it's not food related, but it is, it's, yeah. you just have to figure out what those foods are for you yeah. that yes. cause you to get sick. And it's really not a fun sick at all. So I wanted to, I don't know. I don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, that's, I mean, that I totally equate to eating healthy and I eat even healthier now that COVID has happened. So mm. less sugar, less oil, less salt. I mean, wow, less that is plant -based. Your, your quarantine is very different than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my quarantine has me down 25 plus pounds. Whoa. And yeah, I I've, I've exercise every day. This is a completely, this has been a life changing thing for me because I made the decision that I couldn't just do nothing. Because obviously mm -hmm. my whole world blew up when you do in-person events and those can't happen. Yeah. You're you, And then everything just kind of fell apart financially because you're just like, well, all of that's gone until it can come yeah. back, which we just did an event last weekend in Nashville in person. So oh, we, we know we can do it next yeah. year. So outdoors. And outdoors. Safely, yeah. Weather right? permitting. Or, yeah. Right. So safely we can do it. Mm -hmm. And we got our COVID tests on Friday. And we quarantined when we came home because <laughs> we were exposed to people. Yeah. We traveled and yeah. we did the right thing. And our test came back like the same day, negative. Great. And yes, our whole team appears to be oh. negative from the trip, which is fantastic because it's nerve wracking. It's, this is a nerve wracking time because when you look outside, everything looks normal. <laughs> A beautiful, you know, beautiful day, sunny yeah. people out and, you know, just you have to wear a mask because you can get this virus yeah. that can kill you and or make you really sick or long haulers. I have friends that are long haulers and, um, you know, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's a weird world. It is a weird world. And it's true. Things have gotten normal enough. Like our kids are back in school in person, which I'm so grateful for. And they get tested every week. Wow. which is pretty great. Um, but yeah, there are some days where I just run out without my mask because I'm just like, oh, got to go. You know, and then I just go outside. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, and then I come back in, let's find it, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's weird. It's a weird world, like new normal, as they say. Um, yeah, we'll see how long it lasts. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for, for at least another year. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Just plan on that. Just plan on the mask yeah. for at least another year because... There's no way that it's not, it's not just going away. <laughs> the election's not going to cause it to go away. It's yeah. here. It's, it's really here in this country. And just where I, I end this by saying to wear a mask. That's how I always end these live talks. Oh, and good. For those who get to the end or they, <laughs> they go to the end, I always end with a talk about wearing a mask. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. But yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, it's weird. And we wore masks, you know, for like 14 hours, two days in a row because of the event, because, sure. you know, out not to eat or drink, but that was very quick. And sure. right and how was your attendance compared to other times, would you it was say? a quarter. Yeah. And a third of the vendors. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was smaller, but the people that came, we had people come from Georgia, Texas, Kentucky, Whoa. North Carolina. Yeah, we had people come from pretty far. And one of the, the couple from Georgia was the first people there on Saturday. And I actually put them onto a live on Instagram. And I was like, really? They were like, well, this is the only Veg Fest. And it's true. Oh, it yeah, the, right. the only one for the year from <laughs> since March. The market. <laughs> and so they, they, drove from, they drove from Atlanta and 
came over and they have been posting on their Instagram and tagging us all week. They tried every single food at the event. I was like, I'm convinced you ate everything. And they said they like to try everything. And I said, you need to come to every event. <laughs> they will do. I'm sure they would. Do what is your neck? Do you have, well, now we're going into winter. Um, so ha yeah, how's that going to work? And next spring, next summer, next spring, okay. the next event will be in June, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. normal. I would typically have last year over the winter in February, we had a vegan mac and cheese cook off. Oh, Obviously yeah. indoors. I won't do anything indoors yeah. and I'm not really going to have, well, you never know down here what it could be like. It could be 70 degrees in February. It could be 10 degrees in February. It could be 10 degrees and 70 degrees in the same week in February. Oh, <laughs> so oh we, d we just don't know, but I can't plan on it. Sure. So I typically don't do anything in January because the weather is too sporadic. Uh, ice storms more typical than snow down here in North Carolina. Oh, okay. And then February tends to get better. And then with each month, it gets better. And then by yeah. April, May, I feel more comfortable going outside again. Sure. But and then you just take that time over the winter, just plan, right? You've got exactly. so much planning to do yeah and i was doing like by february i'm, I'm willing to do pop-up markets outside okay. or like in well inside would be more normal <laughs> but i i've i've already committed to unless things dramatically change no indoor events in 2021 well that's smart you know the more we were learning about aerosols you know that really is the game i remember you know i i wiped down my groceries for longer than most people did um but now lately i'm seeing just i'm seeing more and more about how the viral load really isn't there on yeah. surfaces um and it's really very much an aerosolized thing and obviously you know the problem with winter is there's less humidity in the air fall winter less humidity so that the droplets don't fall as quickly. So they're just suspended in the air. Um, so yeah, I, that's why I, you know, my hair color is growing out, you know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm not going back to get my hair colored, you know, um, I'm just not, I'm just not going to do it. And you know, there are people who look at me askance or they're like, Oh, gee, oh, whatever, you know, but I have know so many people whose lives were affected by this, um, including lots of vegans. Um, my friend Melissa's dad, who's a vegan, who's been a health vegan since the sixties or seventies. I mean, he's a runner, he's super fit, but he's what 70 something. I don't know. Um, he lost his leg due to a blood clot and he's super, uh, grateful that that's all he lost because it was bad. It was bad. He was on a vent. I mean, it was bad. Um, and then, yeah, I have, I have a lot of friends who lost loved ones to this. So I'm, I'm, it's no joke. And, you know, we we're we're still traumatized in New York. I think one reason why we're doing so well is because we were just slammed, you know, in March, I was here, I was actually running a hospice. My cats, both my cats died within two and a half weeks of each other. Sorry. And thanks. End of March, beginning of April one, we knew, you know, he was dealing with, it was like slowly, you know, um, slowly dying. And we saw that coming, but the other one, the younger one is just boom. And we were like, what? So that was crazy. So it was that. And then the constant sirens, you know, people talk about that. It was just so real and so horrible. We're all just traumatized by it. So we do take it more seriously. And, you know, our, um, percentages is like 1.2%, um, positives on average or seven day average, our seven day average of new cases is like just at seven and my hometown in Evansville, Indiana, it's 45. Um, yeah. Um, in North Dakota, it's like a hundred. Yes. It's over a hundred. You know, yeah. In Liverpool, England, where my hu husband was born, it's like 600 per hundred thousand. Um, so anyway, if you, I feel like New Yorkers are doing it right. If you take it seriously, you know, you're, oh my gosh. Okay. So my, one of my best vegan mom friends, I know you're trying to wrap up one of my best vegan mom friends, Jenna Matheson, and she is in Australia um, for just for this season. Um, she's coming back in January. Yay. But she texted me like, pictures of she's like oh look at these vegan treats at our local movie theater and we're like what are you talking about local movie theater you know but they eradicated it i mean they took it so seriously and obviously new zealand um they took it so seriously that they're going to the movies like we have such 
such a vacuum of leadership here in this country on this issue. That is why our economy, I'm going on a rant. That is why our economy is just in the toilet because we're not taking it seriously enough. If we, if we took it seriously, we could open things up so much better in a smarter way. You know, China's GDP is up four or five percent. Crazy. I, no. I, Australia, because, didn't even, Australia didn't even have a difficult flu season. Why? Because they all wore masks. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, in the Asian countries, they have the culture wearing masks. I don't know about you, but after this, like if I have a cold, I'm wearing a mask. It's a good idea. You know, it's not a bad I habit to get into. But my stupid cold, I hate getting colds, you know. I don't get a ton, but, you know, I've got kids in school and blah, blah, blah. So... No, it's not a bad habit to get into or for us to nationalize in this yeah. country as they do in other countries where people don't get as sick. Like Australia, literally, I've read that because if you don't know, Australia is coming out of their winter <laughs> because they right. have opposite climates from us yeah. and they just went through their flu season and had barely any flu because they mm -hmm. washed their hands, they wore masks. They've got a hold of the virus. They put people in the hospital and made sure that they were, because Tom Hanks, what happened? He and his wife, right. they got the virus. They got, they got put into isolation mm -hmm. and made so they weren't around any other people. It was mandatory by the government. Yep. And then they came out of it okay. I'm mean, thankful. Absolutely. For so, yeah, so Jenna, and she contributed to the book too. She did some um, booby cookies. <laughs> <We got> <laughs> lactation cookies and she did little teething rests for the book um she um had to quarantine in a hotel room with her two young children who were what seven and five um for two weeks in a hotel room and she was at the mercy of the hotel's restaurant for vegan food and they you know they came through for they came through for her but um two weeks with with two little kids in a hotel yeah, that's not easy. <laughs> it's, it's, the kids just want to do stuff. And they don't yeah, necessarily but, but understand. Yeah, but because of that, but because of their stringency and t their seriousness, um, they are able to go to everything. Right. Um, the school is all open, like no masks. People aren't wearing masks. Like, it's, like they don't have it. Right. She's going everywhere. She is living her life. And I'm that's what we can do, too. We, could do, we can do that, too, if we took it seriously. I'm surprised she's coming back. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that, that, maybe that'll change. Yeah, <laughs> Especially well, coming well, back I, when they have I'm the nicer not, weather. That's I'm weird. not counting on it, but yeah. <laughs> so, Marissa, share with us, like again, how people can find you, get in touch with you, buy your book. I mean, I already put like veducated.com to go find everything about veducated. So, share that's it. Um, veducated.com. Um, on social media, we're at Vegucated, V E G U C A T E D, and you can find the book wherever books are sold. And you know, we've got a local bookseller, you can ask them. Herbivore just started carrying it, so plug to herbivore.com. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so you can get it there as well. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, no, Herbivore is uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, she's she's very supportive of of, of Veg Fest. She'll send she'll send stickers and stuff for goodie bags, which is really oh, cool. vegan mom power. Oh, definitely. And then Andrea yeah. Robinson, while we were talking, said thank you for this. So Andrea, if you're still there, no, thank you for watching and uh -huh. and and commenting. That's fantastic. And Marissa, I want to say again, thank you. This is wonderful. I, I hope to meet you in person. <laughs> yes, you will, man. I'm going to make it down to North Carolina. I hope you come back to New York. Uh, we maybe do we come up. I mean, I typically come up for the, the vegetarian festival. I, oh, go, okay. I meet a lot of vendors there and speakers. And I mean, I have, I still have family. I still have a lot of friends on Long Island and it's always nice to visit. It's also always nice to get out. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Very much so. Well, now we have a car, so I see more like family trips in our future. So, um, and my dad's in Asheville a lot. So we'll, yeah. and my, you know, my husband went to Duke. And so we'll probably, we'll probably head down there eventually. That'd be awesome. You can plan on October 3rd weekend for Asheville Vegan Fest. Ooh. So that, Ooh, I will keep that in mind. Yeah, no, that would be great. I, 
I don't know what's going to happen with it. I'll know more next year, but yeah. you know, it should happen. Yeah. Especially if, it, if you can do it outdoors. I mean, that is the key. That's the game changer. Is exactly. keeping it outside. Agree a hundred percent. So I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. You and too. You know, you Thank are... you so much. This was super fun. Yes, I agree. And everyone, I will close up now. Bye, Marissa. Bye. Bye. So everyone, that was pretty awesome. Thank you again for joining us for Virtual Red Trust Live. Next week, we have a few people. We have some like really cool people next week. On Thursday, we have Tony Akamato. This is going to go all cooking, like, type, like, mojo next week. Because Tony is a vegan chef. Not a cooking demo, more a talk. But then we have a cooking demo on Halloween with Chef Claire. So... Next week is all about vegan food, which tends to get people really happy. And again, donate to Cows Come Home. Amaze the dogs didn't bark. Please wear a mask. Once again, this is our new mask. I'm not an it from from Nashville. Over your nose. Not here. Not here. Just please wear your mask over your nose, under your chin. Incredibly important. That's the way to wear the mask. Marissa's laughing in the background. But that's what you want to do. And if you want one of those masks, let us know. It's really cool. This is a little, I've never seen anyone put I'm not an it on any type of shirt or anything. And we have them if you want them. So you can buy them. And of course, vote. It's incredibly important to vote. It's not that long now. It's a week from Tuesday. It's actually election day. New York just had early voting, which they did not have when I lived there. They now have early voting. It started yesterday, I'm pretty sure. Long lines, be patient. But early voting has started here a while ago. Tennessee had it when we were there. If you can do it, do it early so you're not dependent upon a day that anything can happen. But if not, election day is your last day to vote. And just exercise your right. It's important. It's important no matter when it is, no matter what election. But it's important to vote. So otherwise, we will see you next Thursday and Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for our next talks. And we always appreciate you and wish you a good rest of your weekend. Bye.